Hello viewers, in the part 1 of the film on motivation, the concept was explained. If you remember that motivation is a process, it is caused by internal and external factors of individual and all behave is goal directed. In this part, we will study what motivates an individual and how an individual gets motivated as explained by various proponents of theories of motivation. The next aspect the theories of motivation. Now, when we say theories of motivation, that means we are concerned with the various theoretical explanations which have been put forth for explaining the behavior of individual. And these theories can be broadly categorized into three. One are the content theories and content theories lay emphasis upon what motivates the individual. That means, what factors cause motivation. And the next category is the process theories and lay emphasis upon how of motivation. That is, how motivation takes place or how the motivation is affected. And third category is referred to as reinforcement theories. Which, which are based upon the behavioral theories of reinforcement, right. So, first of all, we will deal with the content theories, right. Under content, there are a number of theories, I will be touching upon few of them and the, this includes Maslow's need hierarchy theory, that needs are the prime motivators for the individual and the need which is predominant at a particular point of time will determine the behavior of the individual. Very right, very right. Now, he has given us five needs, very right. One is the physiological needs, one by one. So, you have physiological needs, safety need, social needs, yes, then very right, these are self-esteem needs and at the top, self-actualization needs, SA. These are self-actualization needs and according to Maslow, any need which is predominant at one particular point of time will determine your behavior. As these needs exist in a hierarchy and there are five needs, Physiological needs are the most basic needs of the individual, need for food, need for shelter, need for clothes and so on, right. And then comes the need for safety or security as rightly said. These are the needs where you would like to be more secure. Say for example, somebody joins your organization as, an, as a daily worker. So, he would always wish because he is joining a job to satisfy some of his physiological needs. He is not getting any job, so he takes up a job which is readily available to him. Then he would not stay here, 
his physiological needs when satisfied, he will look for a job where at least he can aspire for a permanent job. Or somebody joining as a de hoc would like to be a permanent employee because nobody can turn you out from the organization if you are a permanent employee, right? So you would look for more security needs. Then comes the social needs. Once safety needs are satisfied, the person will have social needs. That means, what are the social needs? Love and belongingness. Very right. Need for love and belonging. Because man is a gregarious animal, isn't it? He has a gregarious instinct. So, he would like to be in the company of others. So, social needs, then self-esteem. When you say self-esteem, self-esteem needs are of two types. One are the internal and the other are the external esteem needs. That means achievement, right? You are concerned with achievement. External means you are concerned with recognition, you are concerned with status. When we come to self-actualization, what do we understand by the term self-actualization? So, self-actualization means what is concerned with what should be I, right? That means, am I able to maximize my potentiality or potentiality or simply say if I am able to do everything which I am able, that means whatever my potentialities are, am I able to do the task according to my abilities and uh, potentialities or do, am I maximizing the potentialities which are existing within me? That is what is concerned with self-actualization, that is you are maximizing your potential. Can somebody give an example? Because a person who is at this particular stage, he is more concerned with welfare of others, right? And this individual is very, very objective, right? And he never looks for not concerned with external recognition. He does not bother about recognition from outside world or he is not concerned with need satisfaction, right? He is not concerned with need satisfaction. That means his needs may or may not be fulfilled, but he is looking for the welfare of others. Can you have somebody in mind? Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. Anybody else? Any other example? Teaching, teaching profession. No, profession can't be. We are talking of individual. Can you cite some example of an individual who can be placed at this higher level? Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi. So, these people have been able to satisfy this level needs, but many of us operate even below this. That is, we are mainly concerned with external esteem needs, we do not go beyond external esteem needs and these are nothing but lower needs and internal esteem needs and self-actualization needs, they are the higher level needs and these needs according to Maslow exist in certain hierarchy. That means, unless and until your physiological needs are satisfied, 
safety needs will not arise. Safety needs get satisfied, then only social needs will arise. Another important content theory has been put forth Herzberg two factor theory. So, according to Herzberg, he had classified the factors which affect the motivational level into two. One are labeled as the maintenance factors or they are also called as hygiene factors. Hygiene factors and another set of factors he has labeled as motivators, right. His theory is based upon the interviews which he has conducted with the people who were satisfied and the people who were dissatisfied in a particular organization. And he found two separate sets of factors, right. The factors which lead to dissatisfaction, the factors which lead to motivation. That means, the presence of hygiene factors does not make any difference to the motivational level of the individual. That means, your pay or salary, the benefits you derive or you get from the organization the working conditions which prevail in any organization, right, the status you enjoy and the kind of interpersonal relationship, right, interpersonal relationship which exists within an organization or within one particular department, they do not affect the motivational level of the individual, but the absence of these factors that means, absence of adequate salary, absence of the benefits, absence of congenial working conditions, absence of the status, absence of conducive or congenial interpersonal relationships that lead to dissatisfaction among the workforce a dissatisfaction among the employees. If you are not getting adequate salary, that means you are dissatisfied with the job or you are not getting the status which you should have according to your qualification, then you are dissatisfied with that kind of job. So, all these factors when they are absent from the organization, they lead to dissatisfaction among the employees. On the other hand, if these factors are present, that means, there is adequate salary, adequate pay or adequate benefits, adequate working conditions and congenial relationships, they do not lead to motivation. That means, on one side you have dissatisfaction, on the other end of the continuum is no dissatisfaction. It does not lead to satisfaction automatically, the presence of these factors. These pre the presence of these factors means there will be no dissatisfaction among the employees or among the workforce. He will not be satisfied in this case, but where will you put job security, working conditions, right. So, when you say motivators, a separate set. Now, what is it that motivates the individual in work setting? That is, what is it that adds to the satisfaction of the employees in the work organization? These factors are achievement. Somebody is able to achieve something that leads to satisfaction or the person gets recognition or 
the person gets more responsibility in the organization, right? You provide him more responsibility. The person becomes more independent, that is more autonomy is granted to the individual in the organization. That lead to satisfaction. Very right. Rewards you can provide. Rewards, that again is a relative term. It will depend upon the individual. If you are providing monetary rewards, they may be able to satisfy his physiological safety needs. But there may be certain individuals who are not accepting those monetary rewards. They are looking for something. That means something, that means they want some additional work, additional responsibility or they want independence from you, that is more responsibility is given and more freedom is given to them or people are looking towards you that they get more opportunities for growth and development. So for this is relative, whether incentives work for one individual, incentives may not work for another individual. But the presence of achievement, recognition, responsibility, autonomy, growth and development opportunities in the organization will add to the satisfaction of the individual. That means if these factors are missing, they will not automatically lead to dissatisfaction, but they will lead to, say on this side you have satisfaction and if these factors are missing, then they are leading to no satisfaction, but they are not automatically leading to dissatisfaction. But in normal day-to-day uh, -day life, we say that there are two ends of the same continuum. Satisfaction is the one end of the continuum, dissatisfaction is another end of the continuum. This is not true according to Herzberg. That is, satisfied, if you are not satisfied, that does not mean that you are dissatisfied with the organization that you are accepting the existing conditions and you would like to work in that environment, right? So, according to Herzberg, you have two separate sets of factors which are affecting the individual and one leads to motivation or arouse the motivational level, other the absence of these factors lead to dissatisfaction among the employees. Another is three need theory, three need theory which has been given by McClelland, right? three need theory. And according to him, there are three dominant needs and person is characterized either by need for achievement. That means this is predominant in the individual or there is need for power or there is need for affiliation. Any idea about what do we understand by the term need for achievement? Or the same thing is also referred to as achievement motivation. Any idea about this? Need for achievement or achievement motivation? The people who have high need for achievement are the ones who set goals which are of intermediate or moderate difficulty, right? These people set goals where there are chances of success and failure, 50 percent chances of success, 50 percent chances of failure, right? These are the people who take 
moderate risk and they look for immediate feedback. They are always looking for whether I am right or wrong, right? They analyze what they do and they will look for to others for feedback also. And they are internally guided. That means they are guided by their own self, right? And when we say need for achievement, if this is high, people would strive for achieving standards of excellence. They will set their own standards of achievement, right? You may say that within 10 days, you should complete this report. But the person who has high need for achievement would like to set his own time frame. He say, oh, I have to complete this task within four, hour, four days, right? So his own standards. And with respect to quality also, they have their own standards. It's not only time which matters, but the quality which is desired by the institution, he looks beyond that. That means he would like to have higher standards of quality set for himself. That is the pe person who has high need for achievement. Need for power, the people who like to influence others. Right, who like to influence others, right? And then need for affiliation means the people who would like to work in. That they are associated with this uh, person or the company. Very, very right. Affiliation means, need to affiliate means to work with others, right? Belongingness is, no, affiliation doesn't mean recognition. You want to affiliate with others for love and belongingness. You look to others for acceptability, right? So you have three different needs and any one need will characterize a particular individual. It may be the need for achievement is very dominant in individual or characterize the personality of the individual or need for power characterize the personality of the individual or need for affiliation characterize the personality of the individual. So you can categorize people into three. So the people who look for need for, uh, who have high need for achievement would set their own standards of attainment, right? The people who have need for power, they would like to influence others, right? They would like to be leaders in the group, right? And the people who have need for affiliation, they would like to work in groups. So accordingly, their behavior is directed. And similar type of three need is given by L. Durfer. And according to him, you have ERG theories there. He says there are existence needs when you look for physiological needs, safety needs, security needs. Then there are relatedness needs, right? You look for affiliating with people, right? So your behavior is guided by relatedness needs or your behavior is guided by growth needs, growth and development, that you want to grow and development in area of interest or in area of choice, right? So according to him, there are three levels of needs which determine or the behavior of the individual. So viewers, in the part two of the film on motivation, we have dealt with content, process and reinforcement theories of motivation. Content theories explain what motivates an individual Process theories describe an individual gets motivated, while reinforcement theory explains how reinforcers can be used to motivate a person. The forthcoming part three of the film on motivation deals with the techniques based upon these theories, which can be used to arouse and sustain motivational level of an individual. Thank you.